Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming along to the Tuxford Academy History Department's presentation for post-16 open evening. Uh, thank you for taking time out to obviously watch this video, listening to what we've got to say. Uh, my name is Mr Gorgon. I am currently the head of the History Department and I'm just going to basically spend the next 10 or so minutes going through what history looks like at A level, um, what we're going to be studying, what we have to offer and importantly maybe just addressing a few misconceptions that people sort of whenever they do history or think about history they start to think about okay so I'm just going to move on to this slide here so I'm just going to give you a minute just as a little bit of a game to start us off with okay there is there are 27 people on the screen that hopefully you can see in a second just one minute with anybody around you can you name any of these people ready go Ten seconds to go. OK, um, now these 27 people, um, there is I'm not going to go through the answers with you, but I'll, I'll just mention a few of these people. So if you didn't know half of these people who are half these people were um, number one is Sasha Baron Cohen. Number six, Gordon Brown, former Prime Minister. Number 11, Seb Coe. Uh, number five, Prince Charles. Number, uh, let's go for number 23, Bruce Dickinson, lead singer of Iron Maiden. 25 Robert, uh, is President Nixon. 20 is comedian Al Murray. 19, I believe, is Mike Atherton. I'm not sure. Um, either way, every single one of these people have something in common the question is what do these people have in common i mean you may have guessed it it's probably the reason why you're here um all these people went on to study history at a further level than just at gcse level um and what you hopefully there's a question here what does this prove well hopefully you can see that this proves that history opens the doors to a plethora of careers and options in the future um whether it be comedians authors uh politicians um musicians etc etc but i'm going to talk more about this later on but it's just a nice little thing to get us into the groove okay so i'm going to go through in the next few minutes eight reasons why history is a subject that people need to be considering or what hopefully you are considering if you want to take forward at a level so let's get up to number one okay probably one of the more important reasons why history is an option that you should be thinking about taking um it's based on our results now i appreciate there is a lot of information on this screen right now but and i'll give you a little bit of time to process it but i'll go through it as well um and i think one of the most important messages is literally straight away on off the bat History is hard. Okay, it's it's we make we make no apology for that. Um, there are going to be essays which people have to submit. You're going to have to be work extremely hard outside of the classroom. But what we do find is that we do push students to work hard and try their best. And as a result of the student passion and the teacher passion and the expectations we set on students, our results are some of the more impressive in the academy um as you can see well 
before I even get into the numbers and figures, I'm not. I'm just going to mention that I'm not including last year's results into this, this these statistics, and that is simply because there were no exams, as we all know, based on the situation. And I think it just do the figures a disservice, and not in a bad way, actually. Um, so I'll just talk about the examined years, okay? So what you can see in the last three examined years is at least, well, a high proportion of students achieving a stars to a grades and the vast vast majority of students picking up a's to c's okay i mean in 2019 we had some of the best results in the school in in the department ever in terms of how many a stars to a's we got 47 percent nearly half of the students achieving this grade out of um let me think of the numbers now um i believe it was like 35 students who achieved this grade which is pretty impressive um 2018 and the co cohort was a little bit different to that what we had in 2019 and those results regardless of obviously being lower in terms of A to A stars and A to C's if you look at this little chart here that says average grade above target level you can see that for every 10 students taking A level um sorry let me yeah 10 students who are taking A level five students achieved the grade they should be expected to get, whereas five students overachieved. OK, so we overachieved significantly in that year. And as you can see here as well, every single one of these figures on this average grade above target level is positive, which basically means that we as a subject get students where they should be and for the most part over what they should be in. So we, we, we do get students what they need to get. OK, and if you compare the subject to what we do nationally, you'll be able to see as well that, you know, nationally we on proportion. Um, yes, 2019, we didn't get as many stars as the country, but our grades far surpass other history colleges from around the country. So it's something we're very proud of and it's a big reason if you obviously want you or your son or daughter whoever is listening to this one good grades then this is a subject that you probably want to be thinking about um move on to number two uh you'll get a teacher who's deeply committed to do to you doing your best and some people say we are quite good we're not blowing our own trumpets here you know we may sound like we are but um we have got a very big team in the humanities sorry history team and we all love teaching the subject that we do okay um there are so many specialists in the subject and we've been we we have not only will you have a teacher for when we come into the topics one side for the topic um there are we also have spares so if you are struggling you always will have somebody to come and speak to who loves the subject that they have taught okay and as it says on the screen you can't ask for more than that Number three, history is relevant to the world we live in today. Um, yeah, this is addressing the idea that there's a stigma attached to history that is based entirely in the distance past. Um, people often think about this, but history is very, very important in terms of patterns repeating themselves. And if you want to understand the future, you need to know the past. Many people have said that. Um, as it says on the screen however in order to make sense of current affairs it's important to study the past as everything which is happening around us has been influenced by and is direct result of that which has preceded it in this way the study of history is explicitly re relevant to us now you can take that into looking at current times you know um learning about history now um sorry learning about history can have an impact on obviously looking at what, what the world is like today um covid times obviously that we're going through at the minute everybody who is listening or watching this presentation who's a year 11 has learned medicine through time and hopefully they can take on messages from learning in year 11 or year 10 should i say the medicine through time course it's what we're looking at now it's 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 a repetition of things and obviously history is exceptionally relevant some people think it's a subject to the past i think it's a subject to the present and future as well number four History teaches you transferable skills for life. Um, it allows you to think boldly but reflectively using evidence to support your ideas, which is great for budding lawyers or police officers. History teaches skills such as inquiry, investigation skills, communication skills, thinking skills and extended writing skills. Now, all of those skills will 
put you in good stead for future opportunities, future jobs in, 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 in the future, which links us nicely to point number five. Oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, which should be point number six. And I'll come back to point number five. I've seen history helps you to get a range of highly paid jobs in the future, whether it be teaching and research, archiving and heritage, politics, media, business and commerce, marketing, advertising and PR law and so on. The point I'm trying to make here is people often associate history with, you know, ooh, what am I going to do if I get a history qualification? Oh, I'm going to be a history teacher. I will be an archivist. I'm going to work in a library somewhere. Um, I'm not going to do a very exciting job. And yes, it does say archiving and heritage is one of the jobs here, but also you can open doors to politics, business, commerce. The analytical skills you learn from history will make you very successful in all of the fields above and so on. Okay. I mean, in fact, it's, it's often said to me that if you want a career in law, many universities see history as a more valuable A level than the actual law A level. So it will open doors up to careers in the future. Now, if I go back on myself, which sort of links to the point I'm mentioning here, history is respected by universities. OK, so if you do want to go to universities, then history is a keystone subject. It is a subject that many, many universities respect. They know the hard work that you have to put into history and they know that if you do well in history, you are somebody who sh they should be considering to go on their course. OK, um, and this is particularly relevant to um, to the Russell Group universities. Um, they really, really look at these keystone subjects, including history, chemistry, English, lit, languages, maths and physics. OK. And they see if you've got a good grade there, if you do get a good grade in this subject, then the chances of you being accepted into this university are very, very high. Number seven, studying history develops cultural awareness. By looking at the history of different cultures, a history student can build a better understanding of why the certain peoples act the way they do. Looking at history of the USA, which is one of our options, which I'll talk about later on, we can see that why race tensions continued on past the abolition of slavery and arguably remain today. In regards to history of India, which again, I'm going to talk about in a little moment, we can see that the caste system still remains in the subcontinent. By studying at the various tributaries of humanity, a broad cultural awareness is yours for the taking. Effectively speaking, the things that you learn in history, whether it be at A level or in your own time, gives you greater cultural awareness and makes you understand people a lot better and their backgrounds a lot better and if you understand the backgrounds of people a lot better then it helps you when it comes to discuss um, man, man management and just the general cultural understanding of these people which links to if we go back some of the jobs that we're talking about here such as politics and marketing and business and so on and so forth if you know the people you're dealing with you'll be more successful which history teaches you Finally, number eight, we've chosen units that are varied and interesting. And there are a few little pictures at the bottom there, but I'm going to show you some bigger pictures in a minute that literally tell us or tell you, should I say, what we study at history at A level. So you start off in year 12, OK, your AS year, as it used to be called, OK, um, and you learn the two topics below. But before I get into that, I just thought I mentioned if you are interested in looking in further detail at the syllabus that we look at, it is edXL. It is searching for rights and freedoms in the 20th century. If you go to edXL, search into Google edXL and searching for rights and freedoms in the 20th century, you'll be able to see the full syllabus that we actually teach. Um, so I'm just going to give you an overview right now, but you can see in more detail if you want to look at that. And then if that helps you sway your opinion, then that'd be great. OK, so anyway. Year 12, you will have five lessons a week. Three lessons a week will be based on the topic in search of the American dream. Two lessons a week are based on India between 1914 and 48, known as the road to independence. Both are examined units. Uh, the America unit is a two hour and 15 minute exam with three questions. The India paper is one hour and 30 minutes with two questions. And if we start looking at the America topic, here are a few fancy little pictures that help you understand what you learn about in the American topic. So you learn about 
uh, American culture and how it has developed over the last hundred years. You learn about the Cold War, you learn about the Red Scares, you learn about Vietnam and Korea and the American response to that. You learn about the presidency of Ronald Reagan, okay, and whether he was a good or a bad pre uh, president, but you'll also know about other presidents such as Kennedy, Nixon, and so on, and Truman, and so on, okay. Um, you'll learn about American culture and how that's developed, and in particular, you learn about the civil rights movement in America, led by MLK and his successors in that regard, okay? You learn about other minority groups as well, or you will learn about these minority groups, such as women, okay? Such as um, people of a Hispanic heritage, people, you le you'll learn about um, the rights of other minority groups, such as uh, homosexuals or um, Native Americans, in fact, if we're linking it to GCSE topics, okay? You'll learn about how America developed into the economic powerhouse it is, and you'll learn about American culture in the sense of, you know, television and the and the mass production of uh, consumer goods and how America is the way it is today. Very interesting unit, okay? But also in A2, AS, sorry, you'll learn about India. And in particular, you'll learn about how India gained its independence from the British Empire. And this unit starts off with learning about World War One and how India, which many people don't really know about, contributed a, a massive amount to the success that the Allies had in this conflict. You'll learn about how this war triggered a response in the Indian people to try and gain more rights and you'll learn about how Britain restricted the rights of the Indian people. You'll learn about the protest movements, particularly from the man, if we're looking middle left, Gandhi, okay, and, and his uh, idea of Satyagraha, which is this peaceful form of protest, okay. You'll learn about the um, how things progress up until World War II. And then after World War II, the massive idea where Britain decides to split India into the con countries we see today, India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, and the problems that arise from that. In particular, the massive migration of millions of people based on their religion, okay? And you'll learn about why, in fact, today, things still aren't right between in, that re in, the, re in the subcontinent region, okay? Um, we move on to A2, year 13, two topics, okay, again, three lessons a week, you will learn the topic, Britain losing and gaining an empire from 1763 to 1914, and you will have two lessons a week dedicated to coursework. Now, before I talk about the empire, I'm, I'm going to talk about the coursework element. The coursework element is a three to four thousand word assignment, which you basically get the freedom to choose what you're going to do. So if you are interested in areas history, you think about that area, you think about a controversy, something that can be argued and that historians have written on. You find the historians opinions, you tell us what they are and you say what they are and you basically argue which of those people's opinions you agree with. OK, we've had so many interesting pieces of coursework handed into us over the past few years. Um, and it's always a, a pleasure reading and understanding and just seeing you develop as proper historians when you're doing this coursework. Um, it is a more, it is hard, but it is a more enjoyable part of the course. Um, moving on, you'll also spend time learning about the British Empire, the fall and rise of it between um, up until 1914, okay? We start off learning in 1763, not actually in the time, but that's the time we start looking at, um, about how Britain starts to lose its 13 colours in America to the point where we learn about the American War of Independence and how Britain loses its grips on, the, on, on its former colonies. We then learn about how Britain changes tracks and goes and occupies the former unoccupied Australia and turns it into a prison colony. But also we learn about in Australia how Britain treats the Aboriginal people. We learn about the controversies involved in that, but we also learn about how Britain transforms Australia into a proper formal colony, moving past the prison colony. After that, we learn about Canada and how Britain uh, colonises Canada and, and how the Canadians also take 
influence from what happened in America and start their own rebellions, but how the British actually successfully deal with this conflict and also how that shapes how Britain runs the rest of the empire. We then look at India again, and this is the pre pre learning to actually the India learning in a in year 12. Um, we learn about in India how Britain via the East India Company starts to take over and then how the poor administration of India leads to in 1857 a huge rebellion which effectively means the East India Company lose power of India and the British um, monarchy gains control and where Victoria becomes Empress of India. We also learn about Egypt and how Britain is in, doesn't even want to become involved in Egypt but they're forced to become in Egypt and also in Sudan and how Britain is drawn further into Sudan and how there are conflicts there and, and so on. We learn about the role of the British Navy in maintaining this empire, but not only the Royal Navy, we also learn about how Britain influences and changes the world of trade during this time period. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what you will learn at A level. OK, if you do have any questions, please, please, please ask your history teachers at the minute or feel free to uh, feel free to drop me an email if you need to or get in touch with the post 16 team and we'll be happy to answer any questions i hope that has been helpful to everybody and like i say please feel free to drop any questions and i appreciate that you've had to listen to me for a good long time so well done if you've got to this point in the video thank you very much everybody bye